Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. Aw oh man, this week was an absolute nightmare. It took about 40 minutes for the site to even load for anybody. But sitting there refreshing the page, here's what I found. We've got orange push pops in both an SG standard and a Les Paul Studio. Let's start with the SG. I'm sorry, Gibson, this is not an SG standard. This is one of your SG tributes or something a little bit lower end than a standard. They messed that up. But looking at our serial number, that thing's really old, 2013, almost 10 years. There were a lot of cool SGs in 2013, like you've got the 70s tributes, the future tributes, a lot of them for a relatively affordable price had interesting inlays. This one just has the dots, and without doing more research, I'm not really sure what this started life has. But it's kind of a cool finish. And I find it rather fitting that the Les Paul Studio is also from 2013. So these orange guys were a set on a different level too. Speaking of sets on a different level, here's a set from last week. So last week, it looked like this. This one, we've got a blue and silver one with a little bit of green. Looks like we've got the Dirty Fingers pickups on this one and a cool blue Gibson logo. And of course, this one gets the Gibson Original Modified decal as well. But now it's time to get crazy. Imagine sitting there refreshing the page for a half hour, just hoping something would load, and you see this thing. <laughs> they called it shaved ice, and that is an interesting finish. I don't think I want to own this guitar, but I really want to talk about it because it's kind of cool. He's got so many colors, so many stripes. Even our fretboard's a little bit streaky, so it matches this whole vibe. But then the back's kind of boring, they just let it be and was listed for 2300 for a Les Paul tribute. So about a two times premium for that interesting top. But if you didn't think that one was crazy enough, check this one out. Chromatic Bubble. Kind of falls in the same category as the last one. I don't want to own it, but it's really cool. It's just got so many bubbles. I'm wondering if this is like a metallic finish or it might color shift in person. If that's the case, that is worth every penny that they're asking on this thing. However, it looks like not all the bubbles got perfectly painted there's some dings in them and it looks like the back is like a black or a very dark blue hue lots of les paul studios this time now we've got baby blue sparkle it seems like gibson's caught on that just give a studio a custom finish and people will pay a hefty premium for it same thing goes for the tributes so this one it's just straight up baby blue they blacked everything out they gave it the see-through pick guard it was a full-on refin on the back it looks like we've got the clear back plates and oh, okay, see this photo kind of shows us there's like a metallic sparkle to this. So it's going to be kind of like the modern flying V. It might have like a chromatic sparkle. All right, maybe that one's cooler than I initially thought. However, I feel like it needed the matching headstock. This was probably my favorite one this week, Black Olive Burst. I don't like olives, but I love dark green and black, so that's just perfect. You've got a good teardrop shape, everything's been blacked out, and I was all ready to buy this one because I might have even wanted to keep it, but here's where they messed up. They they just didn't do the headstock. It's like, come on, you did the back, you probably even did the sides, but you just missed the psh, psh to make it perfect. I feel like a decal of one of those plastic swords that you see through olives all the time would have been a cool touch as well. Then they should have called this Dirty Martini. Now we've got 50 standard black pavement top. I'm betting this is one of those ones where maybe in person there's like a cool design or something that we can't see here, but it just looks like a black finish. But when you swap over to the back, you find out it's a black top because you've got the natural back and sides and those are really cool guitars in person. But there's that side profile shot I'm talking about. Those look great when you're playing them. So I think this was more so a play on words, you know, black top guitar, black top pavement. Then we had Access Custom in VOS Riverside Red. I mean, it looks nice. Striking red, black accents, and ooh, inventive. Okay, so we got the black back plates, right? But look at our headstock. <laughs> so somebody wanted a stinger back here, but you've got the apex head carve. So normally that scares people away from doing stingers. Like back in the 70s when they had the normal sized volutes, usually what Gibson would do if they did do the rare stinger, they would normally just stop the stinger right there alongside the volute. And then some people say, hey, that's not a stinger anymore. There's no point. Well, that's just how it's done. So these guys, instead of stopping it there, that would have looked a little bit weird. They took it a little bit farther down. Looks like they had to put a new Gibson custom decal on it. That's inventive. I'm glad somebody did that. But it looks like this one had some painting issues along the neck and some really poor binding work. Wow. And what? <laughs> Sir, pickups stock in a Gibson? Excuse me? 
You know what this has written all over it? This is a failed made to measure. Either it was sent back because of poor quality control, or because the guy couldn't end up affording it, or they messed up and had to make a second one for him. That's what this screams to me. So it was probably custom ordered with this, and that makes a heck of a lot more sense now that the decal is on top of that, because generally the demo shop doesn't re-decal things like that. That's actually a really cool piece. Now lastly from this week we have Pantone 1655 USG Tribute. Perhaps it's a reference lost to me, however judging by the fact I'm recording this on Saturday, which I normally record this on like Thursday or Friday, and it's still sitting in the shop, I I'm not the only one who's missing it. I mean looking up apparently it's just a color code that's kind of orange. However, that doesn't look the same color to me. Maybe the mahogany underneath it messed up the color. It's a nice natural burst, but it's nothing too special. Looking like it's getting a custom shop case though, that is special. And oh, okay. So it looks like they sprayed the neck a burst color back here, but then they left this part normal. It's got a little bit of flame figuring, so okay, it's an all right one. But other things that are still available from previous weeks, you've got this lefty and SG base. I'm surprised this one sat around, 335 figured, but wow, people do not like these SGs. <laughs> the whole leaving the red stain and coloring over it is just apparently not popular. I thought the green one looked nice. Though cinnamon challenge, I can totally understand. Let's jump on over to the demo shop. Now at first I was like, ah, there's not much to talk about again, but then I actually started to look through these things. At the time of recording, right here is a custom color SG standard base that I didn't even realize it was custom colored. Had I not clicked on every single new listing, I would have never noticed it. I just thought it was another black one, but it's not. So they've refinished this entire SG standard base in a very desirable color that looks good. It just came out a little bit dark in the photos. It's even got the case. And then to me, in this photo, it almost looks like it has the matching headstock. I might be wrong on that though. But apparently it's even a sparkle finish. And if you go to a brand new website, uh, it looks like that's how much they charge you for a new one nowadays is 18. So why not get a cool custom color? I haven't reviewed one of these new ones, so that is kind of tempting. Next, Blueberry Burst SG Modern. I just thought it was a nice top. Not particularly uniform, but nice and wavy. But this, here's the big daddy to talk about. So 1959 Les Paul Standard reissue. So that's a $6,500 guitar, but no, wait. This is a Murphy Labs Ultra Light Aged. So that adds almost $1,000 to your price tag here. So this thing being offered at five grand, that is a steal. What's going on here? I mean, that's like what a regular R9 would sell for. I mean, it's got a nice top, heavily figured the kind I like that's a little bit more wavy. We've got some extreme aging if that's what you're into, but you keep going through these photos. You go, wow, that's a really nice back, extra dark, maybe a little bit too dark for my own taste, but, but it looks like you do have some mahogany figuring in with that. Headstock's not snapped off. Serial number's a bit dark, but we can still kind of see it. Looks like maybe a small ding right here, but then it hits ya. Ooh, okay, it's one of those. So I didn't want to really talk about this because I don't know the full details, but the very early Murphy Labs guitars, apparently there was an issue with the paint and they would flake off. I've heard of this happening like on the face of the guitar too. So that's why this thing is as cheap as it is because you might have to refinish it one day. Now, if it stays secluded in just one area, yeah, you can sand it down, refin that area only. But I mean, you're buying an aged guitar anyways, so having some finish missing with this kind of a discount, I, I don't know. It doesn't necessarily surprise me that it's lasted a few days because that could just be a ticking time bomb here, but a great candidate for an official refinish, like send it to historic makeovers and whatnot, that is an awesome candidate for that. Here's something along the same lines. This time it's a 58 Les Paul standard Bolivian bourbon burst. So a custom shop for 35? Now granted, the 58 reissues, they're a little bit cheaper than the 59s, about 1500 bucks if I remember correctly. But even at 5,000, knocking off 1500 on one of these. I mean, sure, it's not the nicest looking back. I mean, it's okay. And the top is very plain, but it's supposed to be being a 58. I mean, this just seems like uh, an obnoxiously good deal. Now they swapped out our tuners and we got a couple of dings and dents, but then what is this? Wh where, where did they get a 90s Gibson case? I mean, this thing is a newer guitar. I would really like an explanation of that because that's not like them reissuing the 90s style case that just is a 90s case they would never bring the combo locks back I mean, it looks like the serial number puts that one to 2019 they called it a 2020 so why does it have a 90s case <laughs> i like it though 
Oh, we got some more Brazilian dreams here. There were only two this week, so that puts us to an even round number of 20. I think they're done. I could get proven wrong next time, but generally they've released these in batches of three and five. So I think we might have ran through all the old inventory of these poor unsung guitars. You can check out my review and demo if you need to learn more about this. It's an interesting asterisk in Gibson history, if nothing else. However, this is the first time that they haven't all sold out within three days. So if you want potentially the last one, there is one still on the demo shop. Once they're done dumping these things, I think that's when prices could potentially get interesting. Interesting. But here's the other reason why I think they're done. They dropped this bad boy. So, Anaconda Burst, you're probably like, who cares? They make millions of these things at Gibson USA. No, 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 my friend. This is the original Anaconda Burst before they mass produced them. I think it was between like uh, 2017, 2018, somewhere around there, they did limited editions of these Anaconda Bursts and they were really cool. They had a USA one. There's a couple of custom shops as well, if I remember correctly. This is one of the USA signed versions. So it's got Slash's signature, so that makes it worth a lot more because, you know, it's factory original. Now, do I think they're going to start dumping 100 million of these? I doubt it. This just looks like, you know, there were some issues on it, so it wasn't actually sent out. But maybe there will be some other older slash models coming through here. But I really like the look of the original Anaconda Bursts just a little bit better. The whole cream plastics. I like the more wide tops these have. But to find the original run of these is getting kind of difficult. Like so far, all I see is this one advertised for 5,000. And wow, that's the unsigned version. The demo shop was actually a pretty nice price. There's also this AFD that they blacked out for some reason. This is a nice top though. Then there was another nice one that was regular conditions. The 60 standard had a pretty nice top. This Les Paul signature from the year 2014, they're interesting guitars, maybe not my favorite model out of that year because the piece is way cooler than this, but that has some nice figuring on the back and it's got some flame patterning, but you go through all this and you actually see there's a pretty gnarly finish check right here in the cutaway. Now that doesn't look structural, but it is there and it's a bit of an eyesore. This Les Paul special, they put a see-through pickguard on and it's got a little bit of flame figuring in the neck. And we had another one of those olive drab flying Vs. So the reason I, I wanted to share this one with you guys is, look, there's a big chip out of the side of the neck. <laughs> Sold as a second quality when, hmm, when I bought mine for review and demo and it had a big chip like that, I got sold as first quality. Well, anyways, I'm glad they caught it, especially because it's on the side of the neck that you don't necessarily see. But that was funny to see that again. And then another 59 reissue that I thought had a pretty cool top. So now we can jump the plane and go to the European side of things. Apparently they did update last week, it was just after I'd already recorded, but there wasn't nothing too exciting here. However, within the sold category, I did find two interesting guitars. First off, I didn't even know this existed. Custom Shop 336 Plain Diamond F-Holes. Okay, so it's like Trini Lopez style, it's got some Dave Grohl vibes going on with the cat eye on the guitar. It's small, it's got the regular like Les Paul style layout with the toggle switch down here, but then you look at that and it's got the giant <laughs> headstock on it. Okay, once again, same vibes as we were talking about before, but in red, I mean, that is such a freak of a guitar because they shrunk the body down but elongated the headstock. But at the same time, that doesn't look like it's the full-size Firebird headstock. Like, look at this photo. Those are like a little bit bigger. Maybe it's just the photo angles, but that was a freak of a beast to find in here. Apparently from 2014, so that's a little bit of an older one. And surprisingly for the European shop, it's in decent condition, so I'm curious where that's been for almost eight, nine years. And then they had another one of these 275s. Demo Shop US side used to get these all the time, but I think they've pretty well sold through their inventory. That was a fantastic deal, including value added tax. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.